We are about to have some fun today, my friends. You hear it a lot. PC Master Race. PC Master Race. But have you ever wondered why PC gaming is considered to be the Master Race? Now, if you're a PC gamer, you likely already know the reasons. But if you're on the outside looking in, it can be hard to really get. And today, I'm going to do my best to lay it out for you. What is up, guys? Jimmy or Chaos. Welcome to Chaos Top 10s. And today, we're going to be counting down the 10 reasons that PC gaming is superior. Now, if you want to see the opposite end of the spectrum, and you want to see 10 reasons why console gaming is superior, we could do that as well. But today, it's all about the PC. Let's get started. Be sure to enter the monthly $200 Amazon gift card here on the channel. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and turn on your notifications for a chance to win. Leave a comment why you want it with your Twitter handle, and I will pick the winner at the end of the month. Good luck. Kicking off this list is simple. Pricing. A common misconception about PC gaming is that it's super expensive, that console gaming is way cheaper. While PC gaming can be expensive if you're trying to build this mega machine, a standard gaming PC really isn't that expensive. And you can build a solid computer for just as much, if not even less, than buying a new console. Plus, because PC gaming is so customizable and you're not buying the complete package, you can get very creative with what you want and the pricing that you're comfortable with. With consoles, you've got one price and that's it. But with PC gaming, you can actually decide what aspects you do and what aspects you don't want to pay a lot of money for and you can tailor the machine to fit your personal budget. At number nine, keyboard and mouse. While people may have their own preferences about controllers uh, or keyboard or mouse, there's no denying that the keyboard and the mouse are vastly superior to controllers in many different types of games. In shooters, RTS games, strategy games, MOBAs, and many RPGs as well, the keyboard and mouse just give you so much more control over what your character does. And the precision you have with a mouse is far better than that of a joystick when playing shooters. Plus, if you don't like the keyboard and mouse or if you're not used to using them yet, you can always just plug a controller into your PC and play the way you would on a console. The PC definitely has the advantage in terms of controller options and ways for you to actually play. Try going up against a good player in Fortnite that's using a keyboard and mouse when you're using a console controller. At number eight, we have a huge advantage for the PC. Open marketplace. Consoles have a closed marketplace in which the big companies, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, get to decide what is and is not on your console. On the PC, however, this is not the case. Sure, you have services like Steam and Origin that streamline the process of getting your games, but that doesn't mean that you have to get games through them. This leads to a massive indie marketplace in the world of modding, betas, emulators, you name it, it's out there. The openness of the PC marketplace leads to much better competition and more products. Competition breeds success. And when you don't have the competition, well, you can't really hold the companies accountable to give you the best products. And speaking of which, how about cheaper games? This is another very good side effect of the openness of the PC marketplace. Now, with Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo consoles, you have a fixed price for digital downloads, and there isn't much competition because, at the end of the day, you have a company deciding how expensive things are going to be. But... On the other end of the spectrum with the PC, you have multiple marketplaces to buy games from such Steam, G2A, The Humble Bundle, etc. Because you have multiple sources all competing for your business, the consumer, it leads to much better prices as well as those insane Steam sales that we all know and love. Plus, digital distribution is much cheaper than physical distribution, which leads to just lowering price in general. And then you have the countless free-to-play in indie games that just want players and they don't cost a dime to get into. If you aren't a fan of how much money you have to pay for console games, the PC has probably got you covered in this category. At number six, we have hardware upgrades and repairs. Another common misconception about PC gaming is that you have to constantly update your hardware, but that's not exactly true. If you build a weak PC, yes, you're going to have to update. But like I mentioned before, building a decent PC doesn't cost a lot of money and maintaining that decent PC doesn't require buying hardware upgrades. Most of the time, people upgrade their PC because they want to, not because they have to. However, the fact that PC gamers can upgrade their hardware is a huge plus for the system overall. When you buy a console, you're stuck with that hardware until you buy a brand new one. And if a certain part of the console breaks, you have to buy a whole new one. On the other hand, if a certain part of your PC breaks or becomes a little outdated, you can simply replace it for a fraction of the cost 
of a brand new gaming console. Plus, as PC hardware becomes more and more powerful for lower prices, the option becomes clear which platform is a better deal in the long run. It's the PC. Cracking into the top five, let's talk about visuals. Huge, huge selling point of the PC is that it is capable of far better visuals than the console is. And while consoles are slowly but surely trying to catch up, they're still not on the level of a high-end PC. PC visuals are much more customizable than consoles. That's, that's a fact. When you buy a game on the console, you're stuck with whatever settings the developers put on it. And if you want to change something or your system isn't running very well, you're basically out of luck. With a PC, you have tons of graphic options allowing you to adjust things like the texture quality, the draw distances, the anti-aliasing, the overall fidelity, frame rate caps, pretty much anything you want for the sake of better performance. Sometimes you want better graphics with lower frame rate. Okay, we can do that. Sometimes you don't mind turning the graphics down a bit for the sake of more frames per second. And that is totally up to the player to decide. Not only are PCs capable of reaching better visual quality, but the amount of customization possible on the graphical side of things in PC gaming creates a far better experience overall. At number four, a more reliable connection. How many times have you been screwed by PlayStation Network or Xbox Live going down? That is an issue that you just don't have on PC. Online play on the PC is not dictated by a single service like online play on a console is. If a certain game servers are down or undergoing maintenance, just go to a different game. Sure, some games use Steam servers, I get that, but not every game runs on Steam and not every online game on Steam runs on their server anyway. When Xbox or PlayStation servers go down, everybody is screwed together until they come back up. But with the PC, online play is largely a game-by-game -game system as opposed to an overall system. If a certain game isn't working, just go play a different one until that game gets put back online. At number three, we have free online play. Speaking of online play, let's talk about the biggest selling point, the fact that there is no selling point at all. Haha, -ha. see what I did there? Online play on PC is completely free unless it's a subscription MMO or something else. Anyone can download a game and start playing online with other people. This has been a point of some pretty major discussion as pre, I mean, people are getting pretty tired of Xbox and Sony charging for online access, especially when Sony raised the price of PS Plus for absolutely no reason. When consoles charge you for online play, they're essentially locking a part of your game behind an arbitrary paywall. And the PC marketplace has shown that this paywall isn't actually necessary. Sony and Microsoft will charge you for a subscription service that gives you online play and deals on game downloads, while the PC will give you all of that and more for free. At number two, this is simple, more options. When you buy a console, what can you do with that console? Play games, watch movies, stream? The amount of things you can do with a console is pretty limited despite how much Sony and Microsoft are trying to make their systems entertainment centers. But what can you do with a gaming PC? Well, anything you want. It's a computer. I mean, there's not much to say about this one. A PC is just capable of doing way more things than a console is. And the things that both the PC and console can do, technically the PC can do them better. And finally, more games, the most games. The most common debate between PlayStation and Xbox players is who has the most games, and it's probably a good thing that people don't bring up PC in that debate, because the PC has the most games hands down. You have all the multi-platform games, you have the countless PC exclusives, you have the massive indie marketplace, you have all of the emulators that give you access to pretty much every pre-2005 game ever made, and the list goes on and on. Plus, the PC is even getting access to the console exclusives now with both Sony and Microsoft introducing services that put their exclusives on the PC. Sony has PlayStation now, which lets you stream various PlayStation exclusives to the PC as long as you have a controller. And Microsoft has been putting tons of resources into their Xbox Play Anywhere system, which lets you link your Xbox Live account to your PC and play your games on PC as long as you have Windows 10. And Microsoft recently announced that all future Xbox exclusives will also be released on the PC with cross-play between the PC and Xbox One. I've actually done this with Sea of Thieves Beta. When it comes to the sheer number of games and the amount of options and the variety you have on various gaming platforms, the PC takes the cake without competition. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 pretty obvious reasons why the PC is superior. Now, like I said, if you want me to argue the other side of this, I can do it because I'm a console player at heart, have been my whole life. So let me know if you want to see it. Let the comment war begin. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Turn on those notifications and I'll see you tomorrow night for a brand new video.